Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to go through a little bit more FNAF news. Not really news, but um, we're going to be talking about something I haven't talked about yet. Uh, and that is the new book that is coming out in one week today. One week today. Um, I'm very excited for it. I've only read four of the stories. I'm hoping to read uh, all, all, all six of them by the end of the week so that I can get straight into these and uh, analyze them for you but um it's really exciting it's really exciting we've already got two fast bear frights um out of the five and this is going to be the third one um we're kind of halfway through them right now uh which is kind of cool and I'm really loving the stories and they're all so original and so special um but I just want to talk you through what you see on the screen right now um which is the Amazon page for this you can see I've already pre-ordered it um I did that today, as you can see, because uh, I'm so excited I've pre-ordered it, uh, and I'm going to start reading it on the 5th of May, uh, that's when it comes out. Um, so we want to find out a little bit more about this, um, so we're going to look at the description, which I have read like literally 10 minutes ago, um, but it's pretty interesting actually um so it, it's in the same format as the other ones that you'll see like it states the three names of the people um it's got a bit at the end that talks about five nights at freddy's and in the second volume readers beware same sort of thing here as you can see and um and we got the same thing here we got a big description uh, of what the book is about and we're going to go through that today as well as the the look of this the front cover so it's called 1 35 a.m what that makes me think of is obviously it's an early time um to be awake but why would you need to be awake i don't know i don't know but we do know that the title page is always the first story so we'll remember that, we'll remember that this is referencing the first story, so you can kind of join the dots there. Let's read this then. So, for Delilah, Stanley and Devon, being left behind is practically a way of life. Orphaned from a young age and recently divorced, Delilah escapes deeper into her dreams every night in desperate need for a wake-up call. Stanley is newly dumped, stuck in a dead-end job for a mysterious employer and unable to connect with anyone. And Devon, abandoned by his dad and ignored by his mum, can't explain why love and friendship come so easily to everyone except him. Unfortunately, in the coolest, Calus? I don't know, I don't know what that means. In this mysterious world of Five Nights at Freddy's, it's always in the depths of loneliness when evil creeps in. Uh, blah blah blah, this is the same thing basically. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Now, first thing we're going to analyse, as we always do, is the names. Um, because one of them is familiar. Stanley. Um, you will know Stanley from the Silver Eyes, right here. This is... I think it's content. No, this is how he appears in the Freddy Files. Anyway, this is... Um, yeah, Stanley is a toy unicorn that was built by Henry for his daughter, Charlotte Emily. Uh, he was built to move on a track around a bedroom, and we know we know him from the Silver Eyes, but I don't think, honestly, it's going to make any difference on the story whatsoever. Maybe it could be connected more to the books than the games? Don't know about that. That's just a theory. But let's go through the story one by one. So, orphaned from a young age and recently divorced, Delilah escapes deeper into her dreams every night in desperate need for a wake-up call. So we've got Delilah, who is orphaned, uh, and she's recently divorced. Okay, so she's, she's kind of old. Well, not not old, but she's been married before. So she's like at least in her 20s. Um, but she keeps having weird dreams every night, and she needs someone to wake her up. So the fact that the, the story is called 1.35am is interesting to me, because that must be the time when the wake up call happens um, whether or not it's by this animatronics which is very strange by the way it's, it's kind of like a 
a Punch and Judy, if you know that that is. It's like a puppet. Or like like those puppets from uh, Toy Story 4. Um, I actually don't know if that's right. Anyway, it's a very strange looking animatronic, but it reminds me of Baby. It really does. Because of these big cheeks um, and like... The other thing is she's got like a, a bow in her hair which is close to Susie uh, who actually has a bow in the back if you see. She's also got this kind of hat thing. I don't know... I don't. Yeah, I don't know if what this is about. Um, but it seems interesting. Uh, next story. Stanley is newly dumped, stuck in a dead-end job for a mysterious employer and unable to connect with anyone. Um... Yeah, there's not really much there to, to pick out. Um, he's newly dumped, stuck in a dead-end job. He seems just like a very tragic character. And as we know, the second stories in these books are usually the creepiest. And, and they end up with the weirdest endings. Um, and the final story is, And Devon, abandoned by his dad and ignored by his mum, which kind of, which kind of reminds me of the second story in a fetch. Uh, cannot understand why love and friendship come so easily to everyone except him. So he's trying to find out um, how to get love and friendship, basically. So before I kind of end this off, the last line is interesting because the last line tells us about kind of the general plot of each book. I'll show you. In this one, in Into the Pit, it said, But in the twisted world of Five Nights at Freddy's, their heart's deepest desires have an unexpected cost. So, in this book, as we know, spoilers, um, all, all of the characters, all of the main characters have desires, right? Oswald, um, Oswald not as much actually, but Oswald, um, kind of wish he escaped into the it's it's hard to, to describe that one but this uh in the second one um they wanted to be beautiful sarah wanted to be beautiful uh, and millie wanted to kind of she wanted to i don't really know what she wanted but she was a very tragic character and she didn't really like family events and stuff so maybe she wanted peace i guess um but you can see that all all of those stories kind of have deepest desires right in fetch um but as these three will learn control is a fragile thing so in fetch obviously we're trying to control this um this dog animatronic called fetch uh, in the second one, I, I, like I said, I haven't read these, but I know the general outline of them. Um, basically, in the second one, the lonely Freddy gets control over Alex's body. Uh, and in the third one, they control the... Um, I forgot what it was called. The, the plush trap uh, <laughs> into a train. Um, so they're all kind of loosely about control. This one. Unfortunately, in this world of Five Nights at Freddy's, it's always in the depths of loneliness. All of the characters are lonely. Delilah is uh, is orphaned from a young age. That, that affects loneliness. And recently divorced. So now she's even lonelier. Lon lonelier. Um, Stanley is newly dumped. That... that is loneliness and that Devon is abandoned by his dad and ignored by his mum. So they're all lonely and they're all trying to do things to overcome their loneliness. And as we know in the previous two books, if our theory is correct, the first story will be the character drawn in to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Okay, so maybe Delilah is drawn in. The second is taking over their body don't know about that and the third is kind of just whatever really it's there's nothing to I guess 
there's always like an like a cliffhanger or someone dying but um yeah this is very interesting and i'm excited to read it so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you later